So Mrs. Mad Matt and I have just spent the last two weeks trying out the brand new, beginning of 2023, Darcy Ridgeback High Rise Rooftop Tent. What's good about it? What's bad about it? Do we like it? Do we not like it? How do you set it up? How do you pack it down? I'm going to give you all that information in this video. So we found that undoing, unlatching the high rise section of the tent first worked really well. And this is a bit of a unique concept for rooftop tents, to my knowledge anyway. This is the first time a company's come out with like a Z-shaped rooftop tent. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I've undone this latch. I'll go around the other side and undo the other latch. So now we'll undo this one. Now, what Mrs. Mad Matt and I found was that when we stopped at camp, she'd jump out of her side of the car, undo this latch, I'd undo that latch, and then we'd push it up. That's done. There's nothing more to set up on the high rise section of the tent. Now you could pull this down and, and stow this elastic, which just helps with packing up the tent. We never bothered because it doesn't affect you in any other area. So now I'm gonna go down the back of the vehicle and I'll show you how we set up the rest of the tent. Now, depending on the vehicle you've got as to which way you're going to access the tent. Now for us, obviously with the station wagon, we have our kitchen and drawer system in the back here. So the tailgate comes up. So we can't access the tent through the back here. So we access it from the side. And I'm going to go into the, some of that a little bit later. But what it does give us is this beautiful step to stand on at the back of the vehicle, undo the two latches, push these handles up, now we've got the high rise set up. How cool is that, eh? It's just something different. It gives you that whole heap of space inside the tent, but we're gonna show you a lot more of that when we get to it. Now, once you've got that section up, you're going to bring this elastic down and just store it in these grooves overnight. In the morning when you're packing up, you put that back up there. So we'll continue on with the setup and we'll, then we'll get inside and we'll start talking about some of the other features and stuff that we've seen. So once you get to this point, you're going to use these stays to put out the awning as such. Now, you've all seen these, I'm sure, on various different tents around the place. They're fairly simple to use. You take the metal stay and you slide it into the attachment bracket here and then bend it up, hook it onto the awning, as simple as that. And we'll go around and put the other stays in. Now, we come to a really interesting little problem. I'll show you what I mean. So we've got the Dashi 270 degree awning mounted to the vehicle. You can actually mount an awning to the actual rooftop tent if that's how your application needs to be, but you can't actually get this into its bracket. Doesn't fit. You can't get it on there because the awning's in the way. A little bit of an oversight on Dashi's part on that front. So uh, maybe they'll have a rethink. Maybe they can make up a bracket that'll come out further so that you can still use these stays. Now, does it actually matter? We didn't find it really did. The only drawback was you didn't quite get as much airflow through this window here on the, you know, if the wind was or breeze was coming from this direction. That was the only drawback we had. We just left this hanging down and it was fine. So one thing about this little awning is it zips off the tent. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Like I would always set it up like I've got with the three stays that worked really well for us, but different people have different situations and zipping it off is cool. A cool feature. It means that you have the flexibility to set your tent up the way you want to do it. So depending on your vehicle and the setup, you can access the tent three different places, both the sides or the back here. And I could be wrong in saying this, but it feels to me like when this was designed, accessing it through here was kind of what was in, in the minds of the designers. Now, it has got some good features for that. So imagine you've got a tray back um, ute or pickup, and this is at the back of the tray back, and your ladder runs down here because your kitchen's in the side of your tray. This is gonna work really well in that situation. So. You can set the awning up like this, but it's also got this awning. So you're doing a quick overnight camp. All you can do is you take these, fit them onto there. You've got a nice little cover over your access point, your ladders here. I reckon that's pretty cool. We obviously don't use it because we can't access the tent from here, but everybody's different. So I quite like that. And you've got this massive big window here 
to either access it or in our case, allow airflow into the tent. On our holiday, we were packing this up and down every day so that we could go to the beach and hang out. And we didn't find the setup and pack down at all problematic. It was quick, it was easy, and we just did it happily every morning. But there was one thing that we did find a little bit frustrating being at the beach, and that was the ladder. It got a lot of sand, just the wind blowing sand that's in the atmosphere into the ladder whenever we'd have it set up. And what that meant was that at times the ladder would jam up and so on. And I actually had to wash it out. Like I couldn't pull it apart, but I put it under a tap and I, I was working it and getting it free. So it works reasonably well now, but it's not as good as it was when it was brand new. I'm not sure what the solution to that is, but it's good to be aware of it. And maybe Darcy will look at doing a update of the ladder or a redesign or giving us some tips as to how to actually use the ladder so that that doesn't happen. As you can see, it's all scratched up in these legs here where it's been sliding in and out. So we've used quite a few different rooftop tents that come with ladders kind of similar design to this. But this ladder for the two o'clock midnight piddle is quite comfy on the bare feet. So I do like that and did appreciate it. Now, the, the Dashi rooftop tents tend to come with a little bag that you can hang off these stays so that you can put your, your thongs in Australia or flip-flops in America in and store them. <laughs> you guys need to catch up with the rest of the world, you Americans. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, so it's quite versatile and get, getting up and down and works quite well. All right, let's jump up inside here. I'm guessing that when Darshi designed this, they kind of assumed that you'd put your head up that end of the, of the rooftop tent, i.e. the back of the vehicle. The moment I saw this tent, I'm like, this tent solves one of the big problems I think rooftop tents can have, and that is when it's in the middle of the night and you're going again for that midnight piddle, um, you've got to climb over your partner. So if you've got your head at the entrance end, you're climbing over your partner's body, or one of you has to, so you wake each other up and it can be a little bit how you're going. The moment I saw this tent and climbed up in here, I'm like, this is brilliant. We're gonna put our heads up the front of the vehicle i.e. where I'm sitting now, okay? And that means, so I slept on this side, Mrs. Mad Matt slept here, and it meant that I could get out of bed and climb basically over her feet onto the ladder and get out of bed. So she wasn't disturbed, and I reckon that was one of the big game changers, I don't know, big really cool factor thingos with this tent. It's something I really liked about it. Um, there's a lot of other features that we really like, for example, the space. Like, you know, the traditional sort of rooftop, hard shell rooftop tent has the big angle going along the, where this roof would be down here. So this would be your feet and you can't sit down here. But at the moment, Mrs. Mad Matt's up here with the camera. I'm up here, plenty of space. And this is actually the smaller of the two rooftop tents. This is the 1230, I think, is the actual me measurement. If you're mounting this on a really big truck like a F-250 or a Ram or something like that, you may be able to fit something like the 1500, which is that much wider again. So it would be cavernous inside this tent. With that extra space does come the added benefit of you just get so much airflow coming through, which I like sleeping with a bit of airflow. So having the bigger windows, having all of this space, having a bigger capacity of air in here meant that you you just you didn't feel suffocated on a on a warm warm night when you were sleeping up here. Because at the moment when we're filming this and when we we're on holidays, Australia's in summertime. So we're getting really hot days in you know up towards the mid 30 degrees Celsius, which is up towards 100 degrees in the old language. So given that Mrs. Mad Matt and I slept with our head up this end of the tent, we had to change the way the lights worked. And so we unvelcroed these lights and we flipped the leads to this end of the tent and then we ran the power lead across the top here to this side light. Okay, so we did that and then we ran the two wires down the side here through this little eye and then it plugs into our little battery bank here and we get about two nights out of this battery bank comfortably you know lying up here reading and that sort of thing and then we had light now it's daylight at the moment so you can't really see the effect but there's plenty of light in here to be able to read by quite comfortably and the other thing which is cool so you're reading under the white light but then they change to the yellow light so 
If one of us was outside and coming into the tent at night, we'd simply flick it over to the orange light or yellow light, and then that person would come in and just tended to keep a few of the bugs out. These don't totally stop the bugs coming in, but they do help, uh, you know, when the door's open. So we were just intentional about getting in, zipping it back up, and, and then, you know, just touch the button. And it's just a touch button that um, turns the lights on. So that, that's really cool, and I do like the Velcro that you're able to change the direction and move it around. And you could even unplug one of these quite easily and just have the one if that's what you wanted to do. Anyway, there's options, and that's cool. While we're up the top here, the top of this uh, high rise has this like material, I don't know exactly what material it is, but it's like a felty sort of feeling. It's quite nice to feel, but it really stops the condensation. We had no, for our camping trip, no condensation issues on any of the nights at all. Maybe in certain environments you might, I couldn't tell you, but I'm just saying we didn't. Um, this mesh up the top here, really good it is so good to be able to have a really usable amount of space up here to store your clothes so you get up here you get changed into your pjs you can chuck them up in the top here you sleep down here you don't have to have all of that stuff down here in the pockets or whatever it lives up here but this doesn't have enough structure or strength so at the moment we've got two little bags in here nothing really in them and the, this is already sort of sagging down, if you will. And a couple of points in this, it's come away from the stitching after, what, two weeks work. So, again, I, I'm going to have to raise that with Dashi and say, look, guys, you know, you, something's gone wrong here. I know these guys will absolutely not be happy with that. This isn't normal for their gear. I've been using their gear for probably five years, and it's quality gear. So if you did have that issue... It would be under warranty, I'm confident of that, and uh, I reckon they'll go to their manufacturing process and address it. But I reckon this needs clips up here. So if you buy one that's like this, you know, have a look at how you can maybe fit your own clips to have a little bit of extra support for this netting. But I love the idea, that's the thing, it's so good um, having that ability. You do need to be aware that if you're going to pack this rooftop tent down with stuff up in here, then that affects the total height in your packing up. You know, like this roof is going to come down close to the, to the mattress. You need to make sure that you, 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 know, you don't overload this space. You get what I'm saying. The other thing we felt, because we kind of, we feel like we might have used this back to front to the way Dashi designed it. They've got these really go good, excellent pockets up in the front corners where Mrs. Mad Matt's sitting at the moment with the fly that's buzzing around the lens. Um, <laughs> so they're really good pockets. We were wondering, because we slept with it this way, we only had these two pockets. And there was, what was happening was, especially on Mrs. Mad Matt's side, during the night, we'd have the light off and then she might roll over and bump this with a hand. The next thing was like, ah! <laughs> we're, we're getting fully blasted with the light. And that's because we had to use these pockets for our battery. If those pockets could be, or have the option to fit up here, which we think is just them sewing in a couple of eyelets, it's really easy. You could take those pockets, they could sit here in this corner, then this battery pack would be able to sit up here. And that would be a much better situation i think that would be what would work really really well and the button could sit up there as well yeah your switch would be up here as well now while we're filming this today it's quite a hot day outside and there's two of us up here and we've got the whole rooftop tent zipped up now obviously we are warm it's not totally comfortable but it's not stinking hot and there is actually a breeze flowing through the rooftop tent at the moment so let's talk about the windows there's three windows up that end that you can't see on camera, and then there's three big windows up this end. So there's plenty of window space, and they've all got this really nice mesh on there, and, and that mesh is going to stop midges and those really small little bugs coming through. It's doing, like, well, we never had any bugs like that come through. I wanted to show you a quick tip that I've been using for years with windows for rooftop tents, or any tent for that matter, or, or camper. See how this one is folded down this way? Okay, that means that this is coming into the, 
into the camper. Say you're going to sleep at night and it might rain or drizzle overnight, but you want to keep the windows open, which is often the case. You've, I encourage you to set them up this way. This flap, fold it to the inside of the window. Now you can see that the window falls this way away from the mesh. So firstly, we're getting a lot of airflow coming through. Secondly, should it rain, the rain's going to hit the window, this part of the window, and flow down the outside. You're still going to have your airflow, but you're not going to get wet. Obviously, there's exceptions to that rule, but it is a, a tip, and I think you'll find it helpful in your camping endeavours. Okay, let's get down to what you're probably all going, why isn't he talking about the mattress yet? <laughs> the mattress. Let's face it, the whole purpose for any sort of rooftop tent is to give you a good night's sleep. And obviously that's a really subjective thing because we all have different comfort levels, different things we're happy to accept and so on and so forth. So what's the setup in here? Well, the mattress is a pretty decent, I think it's about 50 odd millimeter. So what's that, two inches odd? A memory foam mattress. It's not the high density foam. That, that's pretty cool. I mean, that, that would, um, that definitely costs a little bit more for Dashi to put that into the into the rooftop tent so you know like it's it's decent in that sense and it's got this excellent I really like this anti-condensation mat it's got probably 10 to 12 millimeters of thickness there and it's you know going to allow all of that airflow to go underneath the mattress and stop this getting wet from condensation that is that's a really nice quality piece of kit Mrs. Mad Matt and I didn't find that very comfortable. Um, I can sleep most anywhere. I'm pretty easy going, um, but I'm, I'm, as I get older, I kind of like a bit more of a comfy bed. But Mrs. Mad Matt, like most ladies, has wider hips and, when, and she likes to sleep on a side. And so she finds that her hips oftentimes in, and this isn't just this rooftop tent, this is across many of the rooftop tents we've tried. Well, pretty much all of them. She just finds that after a few hours, she gets numb hips, so she rolls over, and it's, it's not as comfortable as she'd like. So what did we do? Well, we wound up, we brought two, um, we tried a couple of different things over the test. First thing we tried was those, um, like, uh, exercise mats. You know, they're sort of that thick, high-density foam rubber. We put them underneath the mattress, like under the actual mattress. Yeah, didn't work. That didn't help at all. The next thing we tried, which did work and made this comfortable, was we used two self-inflating mattress, two single self-inflating mattresses on here, and that gave us a comfortable night's sleep. Solved the problem, we were both happy with that, and, um, and thought, yeah, that's great. It, the problem it gave us on the flip side was packing it up. This tent, as it sits here now with this sort of setup, you can pack this up with a sheet, a um, top sheet, a doona, and two pillows, you can pack this up and close it down. I think that's perfect. Let's face it, the idea of a rooftop tent is it can carry all of your bedding and you're not unpacking the thing to put it in your car. It just takes up space in the car. So it certainly achieves that. When we put the two self-inflating mattresses in here, even though we'd let the air out of them each day, we couldn't pack our pillows up inside here as well as our sheets and dunas. For us, that's not a deal breaker. Like if this was the rooftop tent, we said, yep, that's what we want to purchase and run on our vehicle for an extended amount of touring. We could work with that solution and be, be happy. Um, carrying two pillows in the car is not a problem for us. But all of that information is to help you understand the situation. And obviously we're all different, you know? That's why this video I hope is helping you make sure you're buying the right rooftop tent to suit your requirements. Um, at the end of the day, I think this is a problem that many, many, many rooftop tent manufacturers are struggling to, to combat and struggling to resolve, is how to have, without having a massively deep rooftop tent, you know, how to have a comfortable mattress in the rooftop tent. Anyway, that's our thoughts on the comfort of it. We needed the self-inflating mattresses. 
The other thing we tried before we even went on the trip is a memory foam mattress topper. And we had a, a double one, I think it was, and we cut it down to fit into this rooftop tent. We couldn't even close this rooftop tent with that memory, uh, that topper in here. Um, we couldn't close it at all. And then we didn't have sheets, we didn't have a doona, we didn't have pillows or anything else. So I'm going to show you something in a moment as to why that might have been the case, because we learned something over the two weeks we were using the tent. So let's start going through the pack up procedure. So a couple of things to be aware of. This is what we found with using this. Along these edges, about that distance from the edge of the mattress, when this roof comes down, there's a, a, sh a form in the roof that comes quite close to the mattress here. I'll show you that on the outside later on as I'm packing up. But you need to be aware of it at this point of the pack up because, I don't know, it might come down to sort of this close to the mattress. And if you have too much stuff here, then you can't get the roof closed. So what you need to do is firstly be aware of that, but things like your pillows, we were lying them, if we, a couple of times we did actually mess around with putting them in here, you would put them down the centre lengthwise in the top here. These window flaps, we reckon zip up the fly mesh and then fold these slap, flaps into the middle of the tent like that, over the top of your sheets and over the top of your doona and all of that sort of stuff. So all three go in like that. Basically what you're trying to achieve in the inside of the tent here is all of the sheets and doona and everything is evenly spread out. You don't want it all bunched up in a big pile. That's not gonna work for you. And you just want most of the weight of the, you know, the things away from the edges. So you just bring things in, put them in the middle, spread them out, and then you put that in and then zip this up and we'll start putting the roof down. What you'll find with setting up or packing down this tent, well really it applies to any camping, piece of camping equipment, you'll develop a system that works for you and your setup. And it'll be slightly different to the way I'm doing this one, it'll, but it'll work for you over time. So now that we've got all of the windows zipped up, we take our stays out of the little awning there so what you might find is that packing these away in your setup, you prefer to do it from inside the tent. You can just unzip the fly screen, reach out and pack these away. And that's what I'm getting at is that we all have different ways we like to do stuff. And for these, there's no really wrong way as such. So now that those three are out of there, we take this elastic and bring it back up to around about the middle of the tent. And I, I found that just getting this awning tucked in like that was helpful. It stops it getting caught up when at the next stage, which is bringing this roof down. So to do that in my situation, I grabbed this big strap here. I found grabbing both sides works really well and just pulling it down like that. It's not hard to pull down. It's easy for one person to do. So what you'll find is that the canvas will want to poke out like this bit is here. What works is reach inside as best you can and just grab the canvas up in here and then give it a pull towards you like that. And then you'll find that it wants to pack away and pack into its spot. And so then you can let this come down into place and you might have to just run along there a little bit and poke it in. But as you can see on this side, it's all packed away. Let's come around this side and I'll show you again. So as you can see, we've got a bunch of canvas hanging out the side here. So I'll just reach inside and I'll just grab and I'm just pulling it, pulling it as best I can towards me. There we go. So that's come towards me, stuff that up into there and down she goes. And that's really as easy as it's gonna be. You're just gonna run along and make sure that it is sealed properly. Now, this is one thing I would love to see. And if I was to fit one of these units to my vehicle, I would do it. I'd get off Darshi a couple of these latches that are on the back here, and I'd fit a latch, probably front of the gas struts there and somewhere around here, just to make sure that I've got clamping on these seals in the middle section of the rooftop tent. That's what I think I'd do. Now we just come down to latching down 
the rooftop tent. Now, sometimes you'll find as you've come down, the, the tent might be sitting, let me see if I can show you, it might be sitting a little bit to one side like this or the other. You just simply push it across and centralize it so that the latch can come up into place. Now it's really important you don't over tension these latches. As you can see, you can turn these in and out. You just want to make sure that they've just got a nice little bit of compression on the rubber seal there, but not too much. Don't overdo it. As you can see, it's really easy to pack up or even set up with one person. This is one area where having a second person is helpful. It's not essential, but it is helpful. And that is when you're pulling this down, because I'm pulling from one side, it tends to pull towards me a bit and it kind of makes it a little bit harder. Whereas when Mrs. Mad Matt stands on that side and pulls that side strap down, it's really easy to do. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely a one person job as you can see, but that second person does help a lot. Okay, so we just bring this high rise section down. I'll just bring that down to there and put this side on and I should be able to go over there and just tack, tuck that strap in. Okay, so it will just tuck that into there and this bit of canvas up into there. Yeah, that worked even though I've got that side strap down and then that latch on. Now, I've been talking about why you want to move your uh, things inside inboard a bit. See how this section here is narrower than this section here? This inside is coming down just above the mattress and that's why you want to just move your gear inboard a little bit and that'll allow all of that to be accommodated. So I've talked a couple of times about why you want to move your equipment inside the tent inboard a little bit. Well, see how this is one size and then out here is another size, it's a bit wider. Well, inside the tent, when you fold it down, this area here is coming down close to the mattress. So that's why if you have too much stuff in there, you can't pack the tent down. And that's why you want to bring a bit of your gear inboard and then it can fit into the cavity that this top roof, the high rise roof, is creating. As you can see, set up, full set up, under five minutes, pack down. I'm going to say five minutes as well. Mrs. Mad Matt and I did not find this setting it up and packing it down every single day on our holiday. We did not find it a chore. We did not find it a hassle in any way, shape or form. What's my end of the day thoughts on the Dashi Ridgeback high rise rooftop tent? Overall, I think it's absolutely standing with the typical Dashi quality that we've come to expect. And yeah, it's certainly in the mix for Mrs. Mad Matt and I to look at purchasing one of these units. Um, just comes back to that mattress. At the end of the day, this has one job. Give me a comfortable bed at night. It's got to achieve that job. Can we make it work given all of the you know, constraints that we're looking at with a rooftop tent? It's well worth considering. Look, guys, go and check out Darshi's website. As I said earlier in the video, they've provided this to us for our holiday. We're going to be returning this unit to them. And, um, you know, so that's the, the in the interest of disclosure, that's all that's happened in, in regards to this piece of content. We're providing this as an honest review of what we think. Get out there and go camping, why don't you? I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.